What is up? I am Crypto Mason and welcome back to the Crypto Mason YouTube channel. Shout out to the Gold Squad. We look for gold in every single aspect of our lives and we always find it. Now, today, we are back for the daily market updates. I hope you guys had a very good Christmas. I hope you gave some good gifts or received some good gifts. Spent some time with your family. But we are back for the daily market update. Bitcoin is still hovering around 50,000. Um, it did give us... It did give us that that little pump up to fifty thousand uh, for Christmas, so we could flex on Grandma and say, "Yo, look, Grandma, Bitcoin is still fifty thousand. It didn't crash to to ten thousand." Um, but yes, Bitcoin is still fifty thousand. ETH is still holding four thousand. Okay, all the altcoins are green. Most altcoins are green. Apparently, there's rumors of Kadena being listed on Binance. That's why that's pumping, I'm sure. We've also got Phantom. Curve is doing very nice. 581, right? I'm big on Curve, CRV. Um, but ultimately, all the altcoins are pumping right now. Honestly, Bitcoin still looks like it's just bouncing between these two, this resistance and this support, just, you know, going crab market mode, right? uh december was not too pretty like we started december oh we're just gonna take bitcoin down to a whole different level we're n we're no longer gonna be at fifty-seven thousand. took a big crash and now we've just been going sideways okay so what is going on uh with some of the other coins let's look at xrp on the daily of xrp i see a perfect cup and handle here like do you guys see this look boom Cup, perfect cup and handle right here. Okay, so the, I expect XRP to start actually going back up uh, very shortly. And actually, hopefully, we can get back to this the neckline of this cup, right? Um, but all I want to break this. I want to break a dollar and stay above a dollar. And this cup and handle formation should play out, but it'll take a, f a few days, right? Because this is the daily chart. You can also see it on here, right? If... It gets uh, a little bit more messy as you zoom out uh, to smaller time frames, but that's a clear one to me. Um, on the daily, the money flow looks to be tapering off into going into the green here. See, look at the money flow. The money flow is key. The money flow is key AF, okay? Uh, you can see that this, is, this starts to taper off here and we might go into the green. I think XRP looks really good, to be honest, in my opinion. Now... Let's get into quant right here. So, checking up on my lines that I drew, I was way off, okay? We actually held this support, this purple support line that I had drawn from over here. It was a key, it was a key uh, level in this summer on August, right? We bounced off it like three times over here, uh, which is like 181. So, instead of actually following my line, which was just based off like nothing basically i just drew it to see if it played out uh this one did play out but uh we did get to the top of this but then we held which is amazing and we actually went up so i was very wrong here uh i guess sort of wrong here but you know we could just <laughs> just do this move it up um but yeah qnt looks amazing too uh on the daily let's check the daily chart Daily chart, the money flow is still thick in the red, but we do have, uh, I mean, these both RSIs and momentum waves look good. VWAP, uh, VWAP does not look good. Uh, QNT, man, I'm, I keep telling you it does not matter about short-term price action. It does not matter. This accumulation period that we've had it has been amazing, right? I picked up like more at 150. And that's basically the bottom of this whole accumulation phase is 150. Even over here in August, that huge support is at 150. Okay, that is the biggest buying level for QNT. So those are my thoughts on some of the, the main coins that we follow. We had Elon tweet out this, Floki Santa. It is pretty cute. I don't know how this is like an actual dog here. Because where the heck is his body? This is like a Anubis type of thing where it's just like a walking dog. Uh... I don't know how that works. I don't know. That's confusing me. But Floki Inu pumped off this. We can see. 
dude, like $10 million of volume flowed into Floki Inu just off that tweet. That is crazy to me, dude. It was up like 70%. So insane. Now we can check Crypto Panic. If you guys don't know the best news site in the game for crypto, it's CryptoPanic.com. You can see a macro view of every single article that's coming out. Look what I see. Charles Hoskinson, right? Uh, Charles Hoskinson here. Two, he's got two trending articles right here that they're pushing out. This is Cardano's roadmap for 2022. So not much actually happened over Christmas. There wasn't that many like uh, crazy news pieces. Not really, but we're going to cover some of the things. Mozzie right here says we have a rising wedge on the Bitcoin two-week chart. But in 2013, it broke to the upside. So this is what a rising wedge is, right? You can see this, this line right here touches both these tops. And this line right here touches both those bottoms. And it's a wedge. It's like a pyramid triangle, right? Rising wedge. And this is expected to r keep rising within this wedge. And then it hits this and, and either breaks to the downside or the upside. In 2013... We broke strongly to the upside. You can see it right here. Look at that. We had like an insane movement after this rising wedge broke out. Super insane. The exact same, basically the exact same structure there. Benjamin Cowan says the battle for the Bitcoin bull market support band has begun. Yes, we go to the weekly. We can see this bull market support band. The top line is still at uh, 53,000. So we need to close. I mean, the weekly... The weekly close is in about six hours here or seven hours. Uh, yeah, seven hours. So we need to close above 53,000. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but hopefully we start off the next week strong and we can get above it then. Now, just look at this. Okay, I saw this. I have to include this. I probably put this in the video title because this is just, it just makes me like, honestly, dude, <laughs> dude, look at this. If quant... It's always the if, ands, or, or buts type thing, or the ifs, the imaginary things. If QNT reached the market cap of Solana, it would be $4,346. Do you know how doable that is? That is the most doable thing ever. $4,000 quant is very doable, okay? And that would be a 21x in your money. This is what I'm saying. Everyone's up here investing in like, um, you know, Cardano, Terra. These are so big already. Like they're massive. Like they're huge bubbles that are continuously growing, but it's a slower growth because they're so big. Pick something that's like still has a lot of growth potential. I pick Quant. Watch this. We're going to watch this video right here. Basically, Gilbert Verdian is uh, explaining one of the features of Quant. It's not... And you will see him compare Quant to Microsoft. So let's watch this a minute 13. You're going to want to watch to the end. So here we go. Not distributed applications, multi-chain applications. So if you think about it a bit, bit more, we're kind of like what Microsoft did. If Microsoft in the 90s made Windows to be internet-based and put Windows OS on top of the internet to create internet apps, that's what we're doing today. So we've got our operating system on top of existing blockchains and future blockchains to create internet-based multi-chain apps where you can actually benefit from the different types of blockchain. So the challenge is with the DAP, it's DAP1 sits on blockchain A and it does everything on blockchain A. DAP2 sits on blockchain 2 and does everything on blockchain 2. So you can't allow these applications to transfer data and transfer value very easily listen to this part very closely it's a problem and that's what we're solving so with multi-chain apps you can actually split your app up and you can say well i want my app to use a bit of ripple for authentication i wanted to use a bit of bitcoin for let's just say storage of data and i wanted to use hyperledger because of scalability for resilience you can actually have that choice with multi-chain applications do you know how crazy that is? You can have, you can like, see basically what Quant does is it eliminates all competition. It actually unifies everything. And that's why I love it so much. So he compared it to Microsoft. I really like that. We also have Ripple Eye right here. 
reminding us that CNBC put Ripple as the 28th most disruptive company on their list of 50 disruptors. Okay, a reminder. Now, we have this very nice speculation here. Hash, the, the term hash graph, this is on Google search trends. So what people are searching on Google, the term hash graph is maxed out in Arkansas, right? Google Trends tells us that Arkansas, of all places, consistently searches for the term hash graph more than often or more often than any other state in the U.S. Why Arkansas? What is there that could cause this phenomenon? Walmart's world headquarters and over 15,000 of their employees. Are you kidding me? Fifty Over 15,000 of these employees. Oh my goodness. Okay, that is like, why are people in Arkansas really searching for Hashgraph? And why are the, like, New Hampshire, like, who's searching for Hashgraph? Like, do these people really know about it? And you can see that is in the dark blue, so... Oh my goodness, I really like that. Um, but yes, that is what we have for the daily market update. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure that you drop a like. Make sure you also follow me on uh, Twitter, Instagram. Join the Telegram group. And goodbye.